So this is lecture two for IE4355 facilities planning. And the title for this lecture is Flow and Activity Relationships. So this is part one for lecture two. The uh, course objectives, as we uh, discussed in our first lecture, include the development of an understanding of the principles of facility location, layout, and material handling systems, and to practice designing facilities, uh, learn formulations, models, and analytical procedures for the study of, of facilities layout planning, learn fundamental principles of material handling, and be able to design layouts incorporating product process and personal requirements. Uh, for this lecture, the agenda is the following. We're going to start with an introduction. Then we're going to transition to discuss flow systems, material flow system, uh, the environmental planning, layout types based on material flow system, and activity relationships, which is part of the discussion will be will take place on the second part of this lecture on a separate video. So the learning objectives for, <clears throat> for this uh, lecture is to understand the interactions between flow systems, flow activity relationships, and space requirements as they relate to facilities planning. So let's start with the uh, discussion of flow systems. So this is the movement of goods, materials, energy, information, and or people. Um, a flow process may be described in terms of the subject of flow, the resources that bring about flow, and the communications that coordinate the resources. The subject or the entity is, um, is the item to be processed. The resources that bring about flow are the, pre the processing and transporting facilities required to accomplish the required flow. And the communications that coordinate the resources include procedures that facilitate the management of the flow process. The flow systems of for discrete parts processes can be categorized according to the stages of the supply, manufacture, and distribution cycles. The three categories are um, the following: materials management systems, material flow system, and physical distribution system. And you can see a, in this diagram, how are they connected to vendors and customers? The material management system connects directly with the vendors and with the material flow system. Material flow system also connects to the physical distribution system and the physical distribution system interact with the, with the customer. So this is the, the flow. So there's so also some communication from the customer to the physical distribution system, and then some feedback. Uh, and there's also some communication uh, flowing back from the material management system and the vendor, um, and then also feedback back to the material uh, management system. So the materials management, the material flow, and physical distribution system may be combined into one overall flow system. Such an overall flow system is referred to as the logistics system. So let's start discussing the material management system. Um, so the material management system or MMS look at the flows of materials into a manufacturing facility 
So as you saw in that initial diagram, uh, we have the vendor. Vendor are suppliers or uh, the subcontractors that are supplying you with the raw material that you need to um, to to run your processes. Um, the subjects of material management systems are materials, parts, and supplies that are purchased by a firm and required for the production of its product. Uh, the resources of the material management system includes the production control and purchasing functions, the vendors, the transportation and material handling equipment required to move the materials, parts, and supplies, uh, the receiving, storage, and accounting functions. The communication with the material management systems include production forecasts, inventory records, and stock requisitions. So forecasts are important in order for the company to project how many sales they're going to have, let's say, over a specific time period. Uh, so they can order the materials that they need for, for that uh, expected demand and expected production. Inventory records are also important for you to know what material you have already in your in your system and which type of material you need to reorder and so on. Uh, so here's a schematic of the material management system and at the top here to your right we have the, the key. Uh, so these dotted arrow shows the flow subject, this rectangle shows the resources and the uh, continuous arrow is communication. So as you can see, there's communication going on here, 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 and here, and then the, the rest of the arrows are representing flow. Um, so as we mentioned, we start with the production forecast. This is what's gonna tell us, okay, so we are expecting to sell these many products uh, next week. So let's, let's make some, some decisions. Um, so we go to the production control, uh, we, we check um, and we put some stock requisitions um, to the purchasing department and they are the ones to do the purchase orders uh, that go straight to the vendors. Um, then um, there's some transportation obviously bringing those materials to, to the company. And those are received at the receiving department. So once you receive those, then there's some payments going back to the vendors. And this material that was received is moved into the production floor and and then send that to the areas that are needed. And then as the, the materials and supplies are used, you need to update your inventory records and the, the process starts again. So next one is the material flow system. The material flow system looks at the flow of materials, parts, and supplies within the facility. The subjects of the material flow system are the materials, parts, and supplies used in manufacturing products and components within its facility. The resources of the material flow system include the production control and quality control departments, the manufacturing assembly and storage departments, the material handling equipment required to move materials, parts, and supply, and the factory warehouse. Communication includes production schedules, work order releases, move tickets, campaigns, barcodes, route sheets, assembly charts, and warehouse records. So here we have the material flow system, again, using the same uh, key. Uh, we can see that there's some communication happening here inside the, the facility between the material handling, the manufacturing departments, the assembly departments, and the warehouse. Um, 
when we say communication, we'll see how important that is when we start designing our facilities. Like, if there's a lot of communication between departments or specific departments, then we want to locate them close by. Uh, but once you get the, the production schedule, this is, let's say for this week, these are the, the orders that we have to, to produce. Uh, so we have the orders released to the, the stores, basically um, telling, okay, so this is the material that we need and this has to be moved. So we had to use some type of material handling. Uh, so those parts or supplies go to the right manufacturing departments. And after those parts are manufactured, if there's some type of assembly department in which you put together those parts, and once those are completed, then you put them in the warehouse. We update the warehouse records, and we can take that order or orders out of the production control because they were completed, and then we continue the process. Um, the last part is the physical distribution system. So the physical distribution system looks at the flow of product from a manufacturing facility. Uh, the subjects of material flows systems are the finished goods uh, produced by a firm. The resources of the physical distribution system includes the customer, the sales and accounting departments, and warehouses. The material handling and transportation equipment required to move the finished product and the distribu distributors of the finished product. The communications include sales orders, uh, packing lists, shipping reports, shipping releases, Kanbans, and bills of landing. So here's a, a diagram of the activities uh, happening within the physical distribution system. And again, we have this key. Uh, so the communication again, between the warehouse, material handling, the transportation, the trucks or the distributors and transportation. Um, so transportation will take everything to our customer, which is the one that um, do the sales orders. Um, so this is the customer telling us, okay, I need these many units of this product. So that goes to the sales department. Um, we look at the warehouse, we have them ready, then we move them to um, to the area, our shipping area, um, and then we do the shipping report with accounting, and from there we move to transportation distribution and transportation. Uh, so we move the material to the distributors and then distributors take that to our customers. Um, the material flow system. We will focus on material flow systems with emphasis on flow patterns and structures as viewed from the perspective of flow within workstations, within departments, and between departments. Uh, so when we refer to flow within workstations, we are looking at motion studies and ergonomics considerations. So uh, if you're uh, an IE major, there's a, a course called IE3360 that looks at these factors, the economic considerations, ergonomic considerations. Um, but here's a, uh, in this figure I have, uh, is just to show you of how ergonomics are relevant um, or how are they taken into consideration. For example, here we're, if we design a workstation for an employee, we, if this is performing some type of manual assembly, um, we can find a way to organize that workstation so they can reach without a problem to those parts or components that are needed to perform the assembly. And those are measured based on, on the size of the employee and 
the type of task that they are performing. So we want to locate items that are used the most close to the employee and then those that are not necessarily uh, used or that those areas that are not reachable for by the employee, we, we typically have them empty or not used. Um, so that's that's the idea. We consider those ergonomic considerations. So the employee can reach out to the parts they need and this allow the system or the company to save time, but at the same time, take care of the employee in terms of still make, keeping them safe, uh, avoiding any injuries and, and so on. Flow within departments. Uh, the discussion will focus on flow within the product process and product family departments. So flow within the product department. Um, we have some, some figures here to, to illustrate that. Uh, so flow within product departments, uh, we have A is end to end. So this is, you have someone here and here and working on their, on their workstations and the flow goes, so this person will take care of the part and then you move to the next one. Um, so in this one, we have another employee here, here that located uh, basically facing each other. And this is called back to back. Uh, so the flow goes in this direction, the flow of the product, and then they're performing um, the task in that way. Um, and then we, we have this front to, to back. So you have only one person here and they might produce or do something in this table and do something in this table and then move forward with the with the product. Um, D is circular, so this person is moving like this, one, two, three, and then move um, the product. And then this is called the odd angle, this one. The odd angle because Maybe you have something here in the middle, like a machine or something that allows uh, you to reconfigure your, your department in that way. Um, flow within the process department, this is similar or identical. You have similar or identical machines are grouped in the same department. Uh, a minimal amount of flow should occur between workstations within departments and flow patterns are di dictated by the orientation of the workstation to the aisles. Uh, the determination of the preferred workstation aisle arrangement pattern is dependent on the interactions among workstation areas, the available space, and the size of the materials to be handled. So here in figure six, we have the flow within process department. A represents a parallel uh, flow B a perpendicular, and C a diagonal. And this one is looking at the, the facility, let's say the warehouse from, from a, a top point of view, looking at the flow between departments, and the criterion often used to evaluate overall flow within a facility. The location of the pickup and delivery stations for each department is important, so that's why you see here, so you have an enter and the, um, the area of uh, departure of the, of the units, they're located in the same place or close by. In here is the same case, but there are some designs in which they're located on opposite sides, um, like here and here. Um, so it will depend on the flow that you, think works best for the product. Uh, but here we have some examples like um, configuration and the flow will depend again. So here you have some parallel flow going on. So it's move here, it's more like uh, what you will see um, like uh, in let's say the supermarket in which you have all these lines and you have to process them and they're parallel to each other. Um, and then you, you leave from the same door that you enter, um, and so on. 
So flow within a department considering the locations of input output points at the same location. Uh, the B here, these two, these two are looking at uh, agents and sites. C is looking at the location of doors that are on the same side. And this one is looking at the location on opposite sides. So the effective flow planning is a hierarchical planning process in which we are trying to illustrate here with figure eight. Uh, so we start from the bottom. We, we design effective flow within workstations and then we move the level up effective flow be within departments and then we move a level up effective flow between departments. The following principles have been observed to frequently result in the effective flow. Uh, the maximization of directive flow path, the minimization of total flow, and the minimization of the cost of flow. Uh, 